This is the process from start to finish of my Alien poster, Alien Priority One, done for Sideshow Collectibles last year, 2020. Uh, it's January of 2021 right now. Uh, I recorded most of the process, and I did it uh, fairly traditionally. I started out my sketches in Photoshop, but once I knew what I was doing, I just went straight to the board. Um, it is on Strathmore wet media board which is just a really thick illustration board it's part of the series 500 so it is 100 percent cotton it's very thick and it absorbs paint very well and doesn't really buckle here i'm using some parchment paper in order to transfer one side of the drawing to the other it's a symmetrical drawing so uh, everything is mostly the same at least for the figures on either side you know, in my sketch I laid out everything pretty well, but a lot of the details of the alien were, uh, you know, <laughs> you just got to go in there and draw all the tubes. <laughs> you can probably hear my, my kids in the background throughout this video. There's one point in which I'm actually uh, painting while my daughter's on my lap. And uh, I'll let you guys listen to that because she says some pretty funny stuff. These are the finished pencils. And then I just take some masking tape. I think it's technically artist tape. It's actually probably a little stickier than I should use, but it works. I go out a little bit beyond the borders so that I can go over that line and then later crop in so everything's pretty, pretty perfect. Uh, but I, I also keep a little tape at the corners in order to know where that actual corner is. And then I start painting. Uh, it was done in gouache, and the underpainting is completely done in black, uh, ivory black. And about halfway through, I actually switched from gouache to acrylic gouache uh, because, well, usually when I paint in gouache, I don't paint that thickly. But in this case, uh, I'm going to, towards pure black. And whenever that's the case, I need to make sure that it, it kind of stays put once I put it in there. And the thing with gouache is it just kind of, um, if you put it on full strength, it's just going to sit on the surface. And if you get it wet again, it'll just wipe right off, which, you know, I usually don't mind. But in this case, I needed, I needed it to be pure black. So I went with acrylic gouache. You know, I obviously edited this video. I took a, a little bit of, uh, you know, real time video and then I had some time lapses because, you know, total time painting, I think underpainting was like about 50 hours and uh, actual painting, like uh, when I go over in opaque paints, maybe 60 hours. Total time, everything included, you know, reference, drawing, uh, post, post in uh, Photoshop was I think 176 hours, so quite a lot of time. Uh, the, the the brushes I use, uh, this one is probably the Rosemary and Company Series 22. It's just a Kalinsky Sable. The other one was uh, Silver Brush black velvet. You can see I kind of go back and forth between the two depending on how fine of a line that I need, you know, because some of these details are pretty tight. This one was so tight I switched to my Windsor Newton Series 7 number one, which I've only ever bought one of because I, I use it so rarely. Uh, this one I've had for years and years and, and don't use it too often, but it really, you know, came in handy on this. You know, it was just a lot, a lot of detail. But, uh, you know, I really wanted to get that feel. Uh, really what I was inspired by, well, I was inspired by two main things, you know, aside from just the movie in general, but H.R. Uh, Giger's uh, Alien uh, was a book about the creation of the designs. And the cover to that book, I've been looking at it since I was about 12. I just, you know, 
anyone who knows it can can obviously see that that's where it came from, uh, especially because I referenced the tail, how the alien's tail kind of becomes part of the background and uh, so it switches into this kind of bas relief, you know, abstract design. And then of course I was, the, the whole idea of the concept uh, came when I, I saw the Sideshow Collectibles statue uh, with, with the alien's arms folded like that and you know the head down. I mean, it's kind of a, a classic pose. It's perfect for the alien, but when I saw it for the first time, the, the, the first thing that popped into my mind was the, the hypersleep chambers, and I just thought Ripley would be perfect in there. You can see briefly at the beginning of the video, I showed the initial sketch, which was real rough, but it was enough to sell it, uh, you know, sell the idea. Uh, unfortunately, Gracie at Sideshow Collectibles, she convinced me to expand the composition, kind of go beyond what we normally do, which is you know, roughly 18 by 24 inch prints. Uh, she said, you know, we can go longer if we wanted. And uh, so we decided to include the entire crew, which, you know, <laughs> I, I was reluctant, uh, not because I, I didn't think it would turn out well, just, but just because I knew it was going to take a lot more time. But I'm so glad that I, I took the extra time to do it because I, I think it was really worth it to put, you know, all seven crew members, uh, <laughs> not including Jonesy, of course. As you can see, I, I use my fingers a, a lot, just especially when I need kind of a different texture in there. Because uh, the brush itself, it kind of smooths everything out. So if you want things to be a little grittier, just just touch it. <laughs> It'll mess things up enough. You'll see that I do a lot of that later on when I'm, I'm going in with the uh, transparent color passes. But here, you know, I'm still just kind of making sure the lighting is correct on everything. Uh, really getting the texturing down, the, the shadows, you know, and the, the shadows aren't quite real, the, the perspective's not quite real, but it doesn't really matter, you know. I just wanted it to look uh, fairly naturalistic, and, uh, you know, if, <laughs> if you follow the reflections, like nothing quite makes sense, and in the perspective, um, you know, if you really drew or, or, or sculpted something like that, you could never quite get this angle because everything really is geometrically uh, identical on either side, you know, symmetrical. And, I, you know, the background, I did change things up a little bit here and there. I also changed the face of the alien towards the end. So, you know, I drew one thing and I ended up painting another. I, I brought the canopy, the, the shell of his head down a little bit further because uh, I, I really liked uh, just the, the grimace he was giving a lot better. It, it looked <laughs> less funny and, and just more, more menacing. I, I kind of made, made his head a little bit more pointed and uh, it, it covered those top lips a little bit more, but I just, I like the, the feel that it got a little bit better. And you know, really the only thing I'm, I'm using here is just straight up uh, either black wash, uh, ivory black or acrylic wash with a little bit of water. And that's what I, you know, the only thing I use to uh, make it lighter or darker. You know, where it's lighter, that's, it's, it's kind of like watercolor. That's just the paper showing through. And ivory black has a, a nice warm undertone. So, uh, you know, it, get, it never gets too cold. The only time it gets cold is uh, if you're actually adding uh, white to it. You know, a lot of what you're doing with gouache is actually trying to anticipate uh, what happens when you're, you're mixing colors, uh, mass tone versus undertone. Uh, you know, when the paper is showing through versus when it's just paint you're looking at. So a lot of times when I'm doing mass tone, you know, where you can't see the paper underneath at all, I'm, I'm actually adding a lot of either orange or burnt sienna, you know, something to counteract the blue 
of the white, which is usually titanium white. Yeah, that, that's actually probably, you know, if there's one tip, you know, quick tip I could have given myself when I was much younger, uh, that's, that's what it would be. Because I, I, I knew what was happening, I just, I didn't know how to counteract it. Um, you know, I remember doing this one black and white study freshman year at RISD, uh, Rhode Island School of Design. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I could see what was happening and I didn't like it, but uh, I just, I didn't know what I could do to, to solve the problem. And uh, of course, that would have gone against the rules of the uh, assignment because we were only supposed to use black and white. But it's probably what they were trying to teach me at the time, anyway. <laughs> now, I, I don't think I had figured out. Had I figured it out at this point yet? For a long time, I couldn't figure out what to do with the crew. Um, I knew, you know, I wanted to do some like abstract, gigaresque. Uh, designs instead of just doing um, just their skeletons or anything like that. You know, I wanted to hint at how they died, but I didn't want it to be too explicit or too gory. But uh, I ended up, I can't remember when I, I came up with it, but I reversed the the pillows, you know, the, the cushions that are inside the hypersleep chambers. They're uh, in Ripley's you know, hers are, well, they're cushions, and everybody else's, it's, it's, a, it's missing. It's um, a reverse image, kind of like what, what happens to the alien's tail in the background. This, this stuff kind of took the longest, but there's just no way around it. You just got to do it. Um, anything geometric like that, it, it's that precise it just takes a while. You know, with the alien, it's semi-organic, uh, biomechanical, so you can get away with some stuff here and there. But uh, with this kind of architecture, uh, it's just, you just got to do it. You just got to be careful. You know, I, I picked one light source from the top left, and I just kind of tried to guess everything from there. At one point, I, I set up some like clear plastic tubes to see what the reflections would look like, and I don't know. I just ended up winging it. Sometimes it's just better to see what looks best and, and go with that. That suit took a while. <laughs> I love those suits, but man, I, I don't care for drawing them. You can see in the background the, uh, where the cushion should be. Oh, there's my little uh, uh, face hugger toy. It's from NECA. I don't know how to pronounce it, but they make great seven inch figures. And those face huggers come in, in the little tubes from aliens. And you can fill them with water and it's got like a little LED inside. Man, they look great. If you're gonna fill them with water though, you should take out the, uh, the wire from the tail because it'll just rust. I should have listened to my wife. <laughs> She, she told me that as soon as I put it in water, she's like, you got to take that out. And then like a year later, it's all rusty. <sighs> I should have known better. <laughs> yeah, you can kind of hear my, my kids throughout this entire video. Oh, here she is. And they're all on the outside. Do you think they have any tubes on the inside? I don't know. <laughs> Are aliens scary? Yeah. Yeah. She, she let out a big sigh, <laughs> and I'm still cracking up over that.
And here's Ash. Uh, he's he's the real villain. Spoiler alerts, in case anyone has missed this ancient movie. So yeah, edited this down to uh, about you know less than 20 minutes, which took a little time, but uh, I'm happy with the way it came out. You really get a sense of just how long it took. I, I, I don't do this too often just because it, it does slow me down a bit to uh, always be checking the camera, but I really wanted to do it for this piece because I've been wanting to do this composition for ages and uh, I'm glad I finally got to check it off the list. I'll have to post the reference uh, on my blog at some point, but I just didn't want to spend any more time on this video posting it here. Oh, here we go with color. So uh, I actually, on this one, I've been doing this more and more, uh, I actually do watercolor over the gouache uh, just because, you know, it's so thin but so potent. You just don't need very much of it, and it, it doesn't mess with the gouache underneath so long as that gouache is is really soaked into the illustration board. Uh, the colors I'm using, I mean, it's, you know, to call it color, it's probably an overstatement, but it's uh, burnt sienna, probably some burnt umber. Uh, in the beginning, I was using cobalt green, but I'm actually trying to get rid of the, anything, any toxic pigments from my palette. I've kind of been doing that over the last 10 years. You know, so the, the overall impression is still black and white, but there's a lot of texture, you know, warm versus cool to get that effect. It just makes it a lot richer. Again, you know, I'm being, uh, I'm get, getting most of, most of that coloring from Giger himself. Like if you've ever seen pictures of, of the, the suit or the, the the concept art that he did. You know, he, he actually put a lot of color into it. Of course, you know, most of that doesn't show up on screen. <laughs> Sorry, sometimes my my furnace downstairs, it really creates a lot of noise. And here's Jonesy. So it's just some burnt sienna, uh, burnt sienna right over top of the gouache. It's kind of the easiest part. <laughs> and I'm done. That's it. <laughs> Always my favorite part, taking off the tape. You can see it's a, a little bit lighter than uh, the finished print because you can always go darker in Photoshop, so I wanted to leave as much detail as I could. So the original is a little bit lighter than uh, what the print is. And that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed it.